All right, so everyone, good afternoon. This is Fitfo. Today we're gonna to be working on mounting some Noctua fans. These are the uh, NF Alpha 4x10 uh, FLX series fans. Um, I ordered them off uh, Amazon, they're like 30 bucks. So today I'm gonna go over just basically opening up the case. I already did a little bit uh, with my earlier video, putting a uh, Anderson PowerPole mod on here, just to making this radio a lot more convenient. So I've been plagued with a little bit of heap troubles. Obviously it's because I'm definitely sealing it in a uh, portable type bag with this uh, Yezu FT891. Um, however, uh, even before that I noticed the fans, they run real loud um, and I'm hoping this will help uh, not really solve my issues, but uh, at least try and uh, put a handle on them for now basically. So they come like this, uh, just in a little brown box here. Uh, you open it right up, little Velcro, just honestly, <laughs> which I tell you what, what a small looking little uh, fan there compared to the box. Um, dealt with Noctua fans before, they're solid fans, um, they last a long time, and they're quiet. So that's the most important thing here we got today. So um, I already opened up one of them, um, but just uh, open up this one to show you guys. You can see inside, comes in this little plastic uh, piece right here, nothing really left in there. So we pop this off. Got our itty bitty fan in here, and uh, to be honest, really uh, not much to it. It's a fan, so got that. We've got some adapters that we probably won't be using. A little uh, step down adapters to uh, slow the speed down and make it even more quiet if you wanted to. I uh, just got a little resistor in here, I think. Not uh, really too much. I still want to try and meet my vein focus of uh, better cooling on this radio. Like I said, I've been having some troubles with that, so we'll go ahead and toss that aside for now. Um. Not sure if I'm going to use these yet. Um, I haven't had the best experience with these type of uh, little uh, splice connectors in the past, but with the space and how small these wires are, uh, as much as I want to solder them, I don't know if it's going to be worth the effort with putting heat into such small wires. So we'll see about that. Um, and then obviously your mounting screws. The rest of this, pretty much trash. So now that we've got our fan, um, First thing I honestly did, um, looking at the fans that are already inside of here, this cable um, is just gonna be pretty bulky. Honestly, it's far too long. If you look at where the fans would go in there, uh, the connector is right around here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set that aside. This is one that I've kind of already did it with. Um, ended up uh, just cutting off the yellow wire real close and uh, twisting it. Uh, now you're probably wondering what this is. So if you look at this angle here, you can kind of see, um, I ended up having to 3D print and uh, ended up creating this part here. Um, it's not really complex, it's essentially a wedge with some holes in it and uh, some little countersink holes for the screws. Um, and so far it worked pretty good. I had to do a few uh, tests I can actually show you here. So this 3D printing design um, took a couple tries first. Um, first time I went with this, I ended up printing it out of PETG um, just due to the rigidity and the heat resistance of that. Uh, Especially with how hot this rate has been getting, I really want to try and keep it as heat resistant as I can with 3D printing, obviously within reason. Only problem with this is way too thick. Um, and it's square. So then I ended up going this route, which you can see there, it's only about one layer, uh, which is about the thickness, thickness of a thick sheet of paper. Um, and on top of that too, is just very fragile. And the uh, angle wasn't the best. It still had a little bit of slop. So I ended up fine tuning it, eventually got to this one here. So I'm gonna upload and include the uh, file to this part. Um, if you guys wanna do this on your own, replicate it, have at it. Uh, first, I'd like to also state that I'm not liable for if you fuck up your radio. Um, this is all on you. You can watch what I do. Honestly, again, it's not uh, rocket science, it's just a basic understanding of how electronics work. Um, and you know, life's about risks. You can't uh, always hide underneath a rock and be afraid of any risk taking in your life. So, um, nonetheless too, it is gonna void your warranty. So just be aware of that. Same with the, uh, I didn't mention it, but same with the Anderson power pole connector. Um, it is gonna void your warranty, thankfully. Um, I'm a cheap bastard and I buy pretty much only used radios for the most part. I bought this FT891 for about 450 bucks. Uh, brand new, they're going 600 some. So. That's where we're at with that. And on top of that, I can play with it. I can change it to how I like and uh, really uh, let it reflect uh, me and how I do things. We'll go ahead and open this up. Um, with this mod, you're gonna have to take off both this and this side. Um, the screws are the same, just right here, 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 on their sides, here, 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 and here, and then the other two on the sides. So we'll go ahead and take those, pop those off, to let you look inside of here.
And one thing to mention too, um, with these, uh, I ended up uh, using a power tool. Be very careful. You really don't want to strip these out. I kind of talked a bit on this on my last video. Um, using here, I'm using a PH1. It says CRV PH1. I don't know the exact nomenclature and how uh, Phillips head screwdriver bits are named, um, but that's uh, in the kit that I have. If you can look it up, CRV. See there. Let's see if that'll work. So yeah, you mainly just want to try and get an accurate bit that fits in these screws well, just so they don't strip. Um, again, I don't know Japanese versus normal American standard, how that really works, but uh, some people say they're Japanese, some people say it doesn't matter. I haven't had any problem with these ones, and I've been taking this Pareto apart quite a bit lately. So we can go ahead and pop off that uh, top cover. Um, Nothing attached to it, so you can set that aside. So be careful once you pop off this side. The side with the ridge does have a kind of delicate, um, I don't know if that's a grounding point or what in the heck that is, um, but uh, it definitely protrudes. If you hold it to the side here, you can kind of see. Um, you don't want to be sitting on the radio and bending that, obviously, as these uh, components are relatively delicate once you open them up on the inside. Yeah, so whenever you set it down, though, if I set it down on this side and I'm going to work over on the other side, I like to just try and set it, use this as like a uh, tray to set it on, just so it uh, basically line it up and just set it down, just so it doesn't uh, interfere and break anything. So now we have a look. Here are our fans. They're actually not really held in there by much. To be honest, you can see I can wiggle these around. There's no actual screws holding them in. They're essentially just 40 millimeter fans um, that are held in by friction and some foam tape. But nonetheless, moving back and forth here, I'm not a huge fan of that design. I don't know why they did that. It uh, seems kind of like laziness uh, on the Yezu engineering. Here, we're gonna have these wires right here. These are the two wires that come from the radio. Go over to here into these two plugs. So. The trick of this is going to have to be, obviously I'm not wanting to remove these plugs from the board and have to solder it straight to the board, that just seems redundant to me. Um, however, these are kind of proprietary plugs. The fan does come with this adapter type thing, but if you look closely enough, the adapter is not the correct size. So obviously it's not a very, might be a universal, but uh, not a very universal size connector. So we can't use the little uh, three to two pin adapter um, on this exactly. So how we go ahead and start is I'll go ahead and take the fan. I, you like to prep them a little bit, as much as it's gonna pain you for a brand new fan. Go ahead and clip that connector off. This little piece is useless to us now, we can toss that. So now we wanna try and pull this type of uh, sheathing off. Just kinda give it a nice little tug and just pull that sheathing right off. Now we've got basically separated into your three wires. You have your red, your black, and your yellow. You don't need the yellow wire. So now that you can kind of see it there, just try and snip it. Use your uh, nice snips that you can get a nice little flush cut and try and get it as close to there as possible without nicking that black wire. I'm gonna go ahead and twist these wires together just to keep them nice and tight. So now we wanna try and get our fans in the chassis. So it's definitely angled. You wanna try and have the wires sticking out from the smaller side of the two. So over on this side, the nice little pointy side, you wanna try and keep these wires both in the middle as much as possible. Um, obviously, you're gonna have some issues. Let's see, how do we wanna fit that? Will it fit this way? So I ended up just routing this fan. Um, comes around here, through here. I ended up just routing it through the top there. And then, should work fine like such. So now with the bracket, once we got it on there, we want both these wires to be, again, towards the skinny side and facing in the middle. That's, uh, there's actually a little gap in the frame where these wires can pass through. So we wanna try and have it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some screws and mount this fan to the fan bracket so that way uh, we're good to go there. We can just toss this back in and mount it. Get it nice and snugged up there. So I think I am actually gonna use these little connectors here. Um, part of me doesn't want to, 
Usually with vibration and these uh, spade guillotine connectors aren't the best. It's not the best combination. They tend to when they vibrate, they cut the wires slowly over time. This wire is very thin. If they break, I can go back in and solder them. If we need to later, I'll do an update video and we can upgrade them. If not, they worked fine, never had a problem with them. You want the plastic part to be facing the main middle of the radio and the uh, fans to be facing the uh, display. And one thing to be aware of these fans, they are directional. Um, obviously they're gonna pump air in one direction. You can look on there and you can see the arrow. You want air to be pumping into the radio, obviously, not out of it. So we're gonna force air in and it's gonna come out the back. So you just wanna make sure, easiest way is usually it's gonna flow towards the side that the cage is on here. Um, so we just make sure that those cages are facing that way and that the exposed fans are facing this way. So we'll go ahead and thread our wires through a little bit here. So one thing I'm noticing here is it does take quite a bit of force. They're in there pretty tight, um, which hopefully should be good. As you can see, the rubber's kind of bending a little bit there, coming off. But once we get them in here, they're in there pretty solid. They're not going nowhere. Um, take a little bit of force to get them in there, but uh, you know, I'd rather take a little bit of force and get them in there nice and tight so they're not gonna vibrate around. And once we get them nice and flush, they're uh, pretty much seated in there. As you can see, that you want the wires to come through this little portion right here. And we'll just kind of route that down so that way the cover doesn't uh, want to smash it too much. So from this point, really, you could uh, actually put back on this side cover. You really won't need to be. Once, once you've slid the fans in, you're pretty much uh, done with this side. You know, in hindsight, you really don't have to take these connectors off. You probably could just clip it, pull the fans out, and be perfectly fine. Um, however, just... Uh, for me to clip it outside of the fan body to show you guys I did that. Now, it's pretty simple. We just essentially have to match up the wires. Take your little guillotine connector, shove it on in, make sure it's seated all the way on both wires, and we'll go ahead and squeeze them shut. So that seems pretty solid so far. Tuck that away, not towards the fans, however. So we'll go ahead and at this point, you're pretty much done. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and either seal her up um, we're gonna test it just to be on the uh, safe side, make sure that the fans spin up, and we'll grab our power pole, again, perks to the convenience of that, and we'll go ahead and plug it in. You can go ahead and hear the relay click on the uh, power side. Now we can go ahead and just power the radio on. And so far, so good. CQ, 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 this is Kilo Delta 8. Yankee India X-Ray, operating out of Fort Hood, Texas. CQ, CQ, CQ. So, one thing to note here, I'll go ahead and turn this uh, volume down now. But, one thing I would note if I were you um, with these fans is once you install them, um, don't do what I did and think, oh no, the fans won't turn on. So even in contest mode, uh, when the, the radio is basically still cold, um, hasn't really been talked on much at all, um, the fans won't kick on. So don't be afraid if you turn your radio on when you're done, fans don't do nothing. But uh, to be honest, them fans are working. I can't even hear them, to be honest. The old ones would have been screaming by now. So uh, definitely I'd say a win here. Um, even moving and replacing the head unit back on here. The only thing you really hear is just air resistance going through the grates that are on here on the front. You can't really do anything about that though. But uh, it definitely uh, feels pretty solid. So I'm definitely pretty happy with that. And uh, we'll have to see how it goes, see how the temperatures go. And obviously before I forget here, it's starting to get a little dark outside, so I'm losing quite a bit of light. But uh, before I forget, um, just button up the radio. Um, make sure, basically put all your screws back in. Um, I usually try and uh, put these side ones in just to, for temporary while I tested it. But I'll loosen those ones up. You usually want to tighten those last, um, just due to the, the design of the clamshell here. Loosen those up. So basically, if you put all these screws in first, it compresses it down, and then uh, these screws will just hold it and lock it in. Fuck. And don't lose your damn screws. Like I probably just did into the deep abyss of the carpet. And after a few minutes of searching, I did end up finding it. All right, then now that you're uh, buttoned up, you're good to go. So I just wanted to thank you for watching this, guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share with a hand friend. Um, this kind of stuff, uh, the, the likes coming in and the views, I'm definitely uh, 
definitely thankful so far for y'all. So far, I've actually got uh, pretty good reception, pretty good uh, comments, and I'm, I'm loving uh, responding to those. I think that's uh, the great that people enjoy uh, stuff like this, and uh, let me know if you want to see more. And uh, if you guys want it, I'll keep, uh, keep sending it. I've got quite a few ideas to do with this radio uh, coming up here. Planning on bringing this with and uh, trying to play some radio over there. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So this is the radio. Uh, can up and do a dummy load for quite a little while trying to heat the radio up really and just get the fans going. And even then you can barely hear it. <laughs> 